Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Word on the Snakevine. I'm your host Ross Deacon and in in this podcast we talk all about things venomous animal related. From venom research, venomous animal husbandry, animal conservation, herping and of course snake bite and snake bite initiatives from all around this world. On this episode I've joining me as my co-host. Hi I'm Ed and before we start I have to do a few formalities. Any views expressed in this episode are the views of the guests and the hosts, not the facilities or company they work for. Today I am your only host due to some difficulties of the other hosts and their social lives. Today we have Dr. Dr. Murray on, um, I probably Maha. said you, Maha, <laughs> Maha, Dr. Maha on, and today yes. is going to be our, today is going to be our first episode on some of the issues of snake bite within Indonesia. So, hi doctor, how are you? Fine, uh, Ross, and you? You uh, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm very, very good, thank you very much. Um, so, yeah. first Indonesia of all... Indonesia now is very cold. <laughs> it's, it's cold, it's, it's very warm here today. Yes. It is, uh, yeah. today here it, it's very hot, the sun is out, beautiful blue skies here, it's very, very nice. So. Okay, <laughs> and here very cold because uh, the uh, extreme weather in Indonesia. <laughs> uh, I always just think that Indonesia is always going to be very, very warm. I, that's that's all that Nathan ever tells me. So, I believe yeah. that it's warm all the time. <laughs> so, yeah. Indonesia is a tropical uh, country, but now uh, many raining and a uh, cold and. Uh, my temperature in my town is uh, 80 degrees. It's very cold. <laughs> <laughs> I That's... think same in Europe. <laughs> yeah, it's about the same as here. It, uh, but we, we think that is very warm because we're used to it a lot colder than that. But, um, yeah, so, so, so today we've got you to t- on to talk about the snake bite uh, situation in Indonesia. So uh, okay. I, I will... So what is the snake bite situation in Indonesia like? Because my belief is it's very, very forgotten by a lot of different countries. Like the big countries like Africa and India always seem to take over from from people like yourselves with, with the high numbers. However, I believe from everything we've spoke about that actually the problem is still very, very big. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Ross. You called me to talk about a situation in my country. Uh, you know, Indonesia so many countries to neglected case of snake bite, and you know, Indonesia is special, a uh, special country. Uh, West Indonesia, the species snake same uh, Asia, and East Indonesia, Papua and Maluku, the species snake same Australia, and uh, Indonesia have the line of the uh, Pulawasi, uh, no, uh, Nusa Tenggara, West Nusa Tenggara, East Nusa Tenggara, until Seram in Maluku, not same uh, every place in uh, uh, the world because the species very species. Uh, you know the line of the uh, uh, specific species and not to the West Indonesia on the East Indonesia. Uh, you know the blue Trimeresurus and the Nusa Tenggara. I, I think the only one species in the, the other the world. The case in all Indonesia 135,000 every year and I start my working uh, seven years ago, I go to a uh, place, other place, island, other island, you know, in Indonesia, 17,000 island, Ross, <laughs> very big country. Yes, <laughs> yes a very, very, very big country, yes. Uh, I think that yeah, is... You, and that... many, many cases of traditional method, the, uh, the snake bite case in human fatality. And you know the 135,000 uh, incident snake bite every year, uh, 25 until 45 percent death. 
and it's not a good news from the uh, people snake bite in Indonesia, I think. <laughs> no, this, it's very, very big numbers. I think in Indonesia you have some problems that are very, very specific to Indonesia, like, as you say, like the the having the many different islands. Um, no yeah, other country yeah. has that, that issue. Many different islands, many species, yeah. <laughs> and uh, a very little antivenom. <laughs> you know, my country production only 40,000 files only to three species, cobra, uh, Calislasmarodostoma and Bungarus fasciatus. Only three species. And you know, venomous snake in Indonesia, 76 species. And all a species snake is 348. All venomous and non venomous. It's a very big problem, Ross. Yeah. And I know, yeah, I know a seven here. I must go. Uh, Every town, every island, and meet many people. I know it's the big problem. I meet my minister of health uh, last year in 2018, and she is uh, she she was uh, heard my report from seven here, and very interest. But my country have problem to uh, many problem research uh, from the many uh, island and money and production from antifenom first aid and the big problem traditional method you know many case snake bite relationship with mystic and traditional method and very difficult to change mindset to people in my country. You know, it's the, my first problem and big problem to my country. <laughs> yes, it definitely, definitely sounds like that. Like that is, um, like that. That, that is that is the prob a big problem for you. Um, one thing that you said is um, that you have around about thirty-five percent, uh, twenty to thirty-five percent deaths from the bites each year. So, is that estimated numbers? Do you have the uh, problem with getting real data? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, WSO uh, called me in the 2050 to join to the get line to 2060 and New Delhi to make to Seattle to uh, Southeast Asia. And I go back to my country to uh, talk many people, training first aid and the other, to reduction this uh, fatality, death and disability. But you know, it's not easy working. <laughs> I must uh, to all my time, uh, you know, I am an emergency physician and I am working in my emergency department and uh, hospital of government. but. Uh, all my time to education patient, education people, community, education doctor and nurse to treatment and good first aid to this patient. And uh, the working, I know many problems. One is first aid, many people not know. I must to training all people, not one or two or three training, but thousand, hundred training to again, again and again. <laughs> and I must do uh, training doctor and nurse do because no get line in my country, get line to my doctor and my nurse uh, tra uh, treatment this patient. Uh, they are to the treatment with the old treatment, you know, with the cross incision and uh, all species with the, my one antifenom or all species, and you know, many case fatality and disability. It's not good uh, news, and I know it's uh, hard to work to change this mindset. 
And seven years, I look this uh, result. I have the reality data. I uh, make the one uh, standard to first aid and treatment, named Borang. You know, Borang is the uh, many question to the patient to anamnesis, and uh, I make this Borang to the treatment first aid until the treatment and until rehabilitation and give antivenom. The people from the uh, Borang, uh, I talk to the all doctor and all nurse in emergency department and new patient snake bite, the doctor and the nurse must to uh, look this uh, Bora. And this good reality and good data. Now, I have many, many data in the seven year and reality data. But you know, my data, not all Indonesia too. And I think my data is uh, until 20, uh, until, uh, yeah, I think 20 or un, uh, uh, 40 percent from the all data in Indonesia. You know, it's a big country. <laughs> it's a very, very big country. That is, that is very much something that uh, I think people people don't understand in in the western world is especially is kind of for you the how how big how big you are as a country you are because it looks like if you look at a map it's lots of very small islands but if you add them all together and then yeah. then you have the the uh, issues with the communication between between the islands yeah, and I, if I have a uh, online communication name remote and phenomation consultant service. I know the many people, community, doctor and nurse, want to know the species of the snake. It's, uh, it's difficult to know the species of the snake and to uh, what first aid and treatment. And uh, uh, to 240, I uh, encourage to all uh, my colleagues uh, emergency physician and uh, chief me to consultation in remote and phenomenal consultant service named Rex and all every day I have consultation uh, 10 until 20 cases every day and you know all time my time to the uh, answer this consultation and now I'm not alone. I have uh, one consultant too, named Dr. Riri, and many doctor and GP in all Indonesia, but not enough too, because you know, in Indonesia, is uh, 280 million people in all Indonesia. <laughs> it's very big. Yeah, that's very a, that, big that's people. A, a lot, a lot of people, yes. <laughs> And I yeah, think, a lot of people. <laughs> and I think, as, as you were saying, to educate that many people on snake bite and snake bite first aid is a very, very big job. Like, I think something that we've shared on the page that you shared with me is that you have been involved in creating a cartoon for the children and a song yeah. for the children and, and stuff like that, I think, will make a very big difference uh, as, as these children get older, if they know the song and they know how to treat a, a, a snake bite correctly, they have yeah, a better yeah. chance of getting to a hospital and getting treatment that they need, the correct treatment that they need. And it can make a big, big difference. And I think that is that's something, and I will reshare the, I will reshare the, uh, reshare it as well on the, on the page and on the Instagram page for people to, for people to see. But uh, that, that, that was, very very good i really really enjoyed that even though i don't un fully understand what they're saying uh yeah I do, but you, <laughs> you can... know the i am uh uh like to the puppet show uh you know the long time ago of uh, many puppet show uh i like it and i uh look many patient is a children and don't know to first aid the 
if uh, they are uh, the snake bitten them and uh, I have idea to make video to the uh, puppet show and I make the sing of the puppet show and uh, the music and uh, the good the good puppet and I think to share to all Indonesia with Indonesia language and uh, I, I want to the English too but <laughs> uh, I don't have time to <laughs> translate English. If Nathan back to Indonesia, I think he helped me to translate to the English. <laughs> because a very simple, simple uh, thing. I, I think uh, the uh, very uh, little children know it. If they are, uh, the snake uh, bitten them, uh, what the uh, first aid, uh, they are uh, made to uh, themselves. Uh, you know the uh, immobilization. You know to go to the emergency department and talk to the parents, talk to the teacher and the other. I think it's good to education the children uh, because I look all uh, my friend children like this song. <laughs> And I think if you can get the children um, to understand and to, uh, as you say, sing the song and that they know as they grow older, then the understanding in the country of what to do in a snake bite situation gets better because the, obviously the children will then teach their children and it, it gets better that way. And I think there's lots of things like this, especially in a country like yours where it is so many different islands uh, they can really really help spread the message on what to do in a snake bite situation and I think that that's really really a brilliant brilliant piece of work and I think a lot of countries could have something similar in their own native languages that could really help them and help the children as they grow up I think it's really really I, I, I applaud you for that I think it was a really really good piece of piece of work that can really help save a lot of lives so I, I'm really really impressed so something else that uh, we we we've spoke about um, with other guests is the traditional methods of treatment that uh, yeah. they find in their country could you tell us a few of the traditional methods that people use in Indonesia if they're bitten yeah, by a snake yeah. Yeah, many traditional methods, Ross. And you know, in all Indonesia, many uh, uh, believe it of from traditional method. You know, the uh, black stone, you know, to the uh, many herbal treatment, you know, to the many uh, ritual uh, traditional, and all traditional methods not give patient good many traditional method give patient late go to the emergency department and uh, my research seven here I uh, look the many case uh, death cases and uh, disability cases because uh, the patient go to the traditional method is uh, 80 percent in my research and I know the very difficult to change uh, people mindset. I go to many islands in all Indonesia, and I look if I'm education to the uh, many people and talk about traditional method. Many people not believe me. <laughs> I'm sad. Uh, sometimes I'm cry too <laughs> because uh, my heart working and. Uh, they are not. Be, uh, they was not believe me, but many uh, accident. Many people know. I talk true about first aid, and the traditional method is wrong. I know if I am uh, go around and all Indonesian, and I'm education not only. I am 
and many uh, with uh, many people and with many doctor and nurse this traditional method reduction to uh, give people death and I know if education with uh, many uh, media from the television from the newspaper internet and the other games I have to idea to make games to snack bite I, I look many people like games, uh, children until adult, and I, I uh, want to uh, make games to uh, many people understand to first add uh, to snake bite and the treatment of snake bite. Uh, I, I think it's the reduction to many traditional methods in my country, but I think uh, meat. Uh, time a few time or a long time because not easy to um, change mindset my uh, all people with traditional method <laughs> you know it's very very uh, hard working to change mindset <laughs> yeah and uh, I think every time I'm crying every time I'm not okay and look many people believe traditional method and not believe true treatment <laughs> No, and I, th I think that's something that we've, we've that has been mentioned um, that India have a very similar problem where they uh, people just do not believe that the that the the medicine the modern medicine is going to help them. And uh, what another thing that they they find in India, and I was wondering if it was the same thing, is because they go to the traditional healers, and the, uh, when they end up going to hospital. A lot of people either die or they have a, end up with a disability because they've left it too late, and then they uh, then they blame the modern medicine for that, not the traditional healer. So they blame the the mod because they that happened to them in a hospital. They think that it's the hospital is fa hospital's fault, not actually the fact that they didn't get the help they needed in the first place. Is that something yeah. that you you see in Indonesia as well? Yeah, now uh, I'm talk uh, about it w with my vice minister last year, and I have idea to pre-hospital care. Ross. You know, pre-hospital care is very important to many people with snake bite. Not only snake bite, I think all diseases. But my fight in the toxinology, uh, I I want to. Uh, trial to my job in uh, snake bite, uh, the uh, system from the uh, pre-hospital care with name Public Safety Center 119, uh, you, you know in uh, USA is a 911, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and in my country 119 is a new, new idea, I, I think uh, not five years, it's a new idea, but I think it's very, very uh, important to helping many people. Uh, I training, I was training of uh, public safety center 119 from the nurse and the doctor to uh, helping first aid and treatment snake bite. You know, I gave him snake bite kit. Ah, I think uh, you must know what the snake bite kit. Snake bite kit is the a bag with the many things from the equipment to uh, immobilization for it, uh, pressure branded, and the uh, simple medical, you know, analgesic and the other. But uh, if the doctor or the nurse uh, make the snake bite kit to helping patient the patient first aid and treatment first treatment is okay it's very simple bag uh, i think the price not uh, until the one uh, one hundred uh, thousand rupiah it's very very uh, cheap i think same uh, ten dollar it's very cheap and uh, pound sterling, I think five pound sterling or three pound sterling, <laughs> very cheap. 
uh, if the, the doctor or nurse or the people go to helping the patient with snake bite, uh, he uh, wants to helping to first aid with the equipment in the snake bite kit. And the public safety center 119 with the ambulance or the uh, motorcycle you know in indonesia many way is very uh, very little not big and big ambulance not go from uh, not go to the location many way is uh, not okay i think motorcycle is good solution to go to the patient and location to patient and the evacuate the patient and go to the uh, ambulance or hospital and uh, uh, far from the uh, location from the, this patient. That's a good solution and the cheap solution. Uh, many town, I think uh, 20 town in all Indonesia, I'm training the public safety center 119 to helping toxinology, especially snake bite. But case toxinology in Indonesia, not only snake bite. You know, uh, Vespa Affinis, Hornet, Sting, yes, and yeah. the yeah, and now jellyfish. You know, yeah, <laughs> and uh, two two weeks, many jellyfish, uh, Portuguese uh, men of war, and all Indonesia. With I was going to actually, jellyfish. I was going to actually ask about. Um, about this because I've seen on your Facebook that you have yeah. have done quite <laughs> yeah, a, have quite a lot of jellyfish on on your yeah. uh, Facebook <laughs> and um, so is is insect and jellyfish stings big in Indonesia? Do you see issues with with uh, them stings as well? Yes, yes, many jellyfish neglected too. You know, if the snake bite has one antivenom, and jellyfish no antivenom in Indonesia. And uh, you know, uh, four classes jellyfish in Hydrozoa, uh, uh, until uh, Bob jellyfish, uh, all Indonesia season. And you know, uh, this season to uh, blue jellyfish or Portuguese a man of war. And many patients from the sting jellyfish, I think 1,000, two weeks, uh, 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 and now in the uh, West Java, in Serang, until East Java, Pacitan, and I think many people don't know first aid to sting jellyfish until doctor and nurse don't know treatment to jellyfish. Yes. <laughs> it's a big case here. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, I, I, I don't know uh, this solution. I, I, I think I it's, have um, one one only uh, uh, work. I, I want to helping. I'm focused to helping them, but this result got help me. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, it would have been quite interesting if one of our our hosts could have been on today because he is looking, uh, doing some research into the different venoms of jellyfish and yeah. and from there how how they can be better treated. So as his work becomes more available I will make sure that we um, that we, we, we share that with you because there may be some interesting information in there for for you to uh, to help with with the situation you have there. So Going back to how many snakes you have in Indonesia, do you see that you get bites off more of a certain snake more than others, or is it quite, quite, uh, or a lot of people are bitten by a lot of lots of different snakes? Okay, uh, you know, Indonesia uh, three area or species of snake, and venomous snake seventy six venomous and. Uh, the biggest of the species is elapid. Uh, you know, elapid, uh, Bungarus fasciatus, Bungarus candidus, King Cobra, Opiopagus hanaya, 
and Cobra, Cobra Indonesia have two Najas Kutatik and Najas Sumatrana and you know many uh, sea snake in Indonesia. No, I can give them two. Many patient that because sea snake and you you know because the many island and you know uh, many sea too. <laughs> it's a big problem. And uh, Viper is uh, two uh, a second uh, level from the uh, patient. Uh, Viper is trimeresurus and the big patient death because color celasmalotostoma or land snake. You know land snake in Indonesia and the big uh, patient in Java uh, and uh, little patient and uh, Borneo. Uh, my friend from the Malaysia told me, Prof, uh, you know, Prof Indranil Das, uh, tell me, no Kalesalasma in Borneo, but two years ago, I go to West Kalimantan, West Borneo, and I look with my eyes, many Kalesalasma rotostoma and many palm oil farmers. The big palm oil, 175,000 area. And uh, I know every day this uh, case is uh, over then uh, 10 until uh, 20 patients every day in Borneo. Uh, I think uh, outbreak from the Kalasalas Marotostoma in Indonesia. And the uh, uh, third is a uh, calibrit, but you know calibrit many patients because attraction and many community of reptile and hobbies, uh, many accident in uh, these hobbies. But many uh, patient death because king cobra same attraction or hobbies. Uh, I'm very sad because. Uh, Prehandling in Indonesia is a uh, big hobbies and attraction and traditional attraction too. Mm -hmm. Two days ago, I go to Taxi Malaya. If you look in my Facebook, I go to helping uh, one of the traditional attraction with King Cobra and this King Cobra beaten him and he is respiratory failure this doctor called me and I talked to the doctor to treatment because no anti venom in Indonesia uh, I have one pile only I buy from the Thailand and I give free to this patient because uh, I think I am uh, must do humanitarian aid not patient pay me and I give free but uh, I want the patient safety with the ventilator and now patient okay yeah you know many attraction traditional not with acute safety equipment that that's one no. thing that I've spoken to um, to Nathan Rosselli um, uh, a lot he, he is doing some really really good work with people getting people yeah. to understand yeah. that there is this equipment available for them to use and there's better techniques and some of the work is that he is doing is, is, is fantastic and his in and no um, no 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 team a medical no <laughs> and you know not insurance <laughs> <laughs> oh i am very sad <laughs> because i know many attraction is a poor people and ah uh, yeah you know the many people in indonesia working with uh, many attraction to working and uh, give uh, food to the family and I understand they not have equipment <laughs> what is fatality <laughs> yeah I think I, mean, I think that's one thing that um, that makes people excited about these traditional um, these traditional shows with with the king cobras and stuff, I think 
because they don't use the, the, the equipment and they are trying to make it scary for people to, uh, to watch and I think that's a big thing uh, of why people keep going to them and as you say you kind of you can't really these people are never going to change to using equipment because it's not what makes people go and watch the show and pay money to go and watch the show so so yeah. to them they don't see it that way so do you get a lot of a lot of people bitten during doing these traditional snake shows and these traditional snake based activities or is it more do you find that it's more the general public that get bitten while at work or in their homes hello hello can you hear me um, yeah. so when people oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So when people are getting bitten, um, do you see that they tend to get bitten more doing um, at work or at home, or are a lot of the bites from people that are doing these traditional snake shows? Yeah, uh, I look in all uh, attraction and traditional uh, attraction uh, in many places in Indonesia and not equipment. Uh, in my idea, I want to uh, donation to snake by key to them. <laughs> and I think if the, the snake beaten them, uh, I am training to first aid, the good first aid. I think pressure bandit and immobilization is the good first aid in my country. And uh, I think if the all traditional uh, attraction have snake by kid, he uh, uh, much to helping uh, themselves with the snake bite with the my snake by kid and go to the hospital. And I think uh, the second solution. Uh, you know, if I talk about antivenom, my country is uh, neglected to production antivenom because not uh, promotion uh, production from the uh, company. The antivenom only 40,000 every year to production. It's not enough to three species. And you know, 76 species in my country, Panama. And I have two uh, ideas to uh, buy from the other country. I buy to Papua and Maluku from Australia. And you know, one file, say, uh, if I buy two file uh, antivenom from Australia, same I buy one car. Because one file, uh, the price is 80 million rupiah. Same uh, five or uh, six thousand US. It's very, very expensive to my country. And I buy to uh, Spacey Asia from Thailand. Because you know the uh, KSMI production many antiphenom from Spacey Asia, from Trimeresurus, uh, Kalas Lasma, uh, Dabaya Roselli and the other. I buy from the Thailand. Uh, the Thailand production uh, low price, but if I'm cool from the rupiah, it's very expensive too. <laughs> <laughs> and every month I uh, buy from myself uh, uh, we from government, uh, myself only, not, not donation, because I know if I donation, it's a big problem to me. And if the patient pay me to, it's problem to me. I give free to the patient because I want to help them too, not profit to me. And I look, in seven years, many people have to hope to life because my solution is buy from uh, antifenom from the other country. I hope 
next time my government buy uh, because uh, this antifenom is the important drug to helping many patients to next time. I think my government must buy from the other country or production in my country. If the Nathan Beck, I think he uh, must to help him through to this production. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, th I think people, um, I think a lot of people do really struggle to understand that the a country like yourself that has so many different islands as well, even if you have antivenom available for the yeah. species that the person's been bitten by, it may be on a different island or um, how do you get a, so if that is the case, how do you get around that? Do you put the uh, antivenom on a plane and send it to them on a plane or do you try and move the patient or how do you, how do you go about how about yeah. having antivenom and the drugs in another place yeah uh, if the near from my town I go by train or by bus to give the patient and give training to the doctor because the doctor in Indonesia all doctors don't know the guideline from WSO to treat the true treatment from snake bite. And if the, the other island is difficult, you know, a flight in Indonesia is very expensive now. <laughs> it's a big problem to me. Last year, the flight in Indonesia not not expensive to me. Uh, now. I go to fly to Papua, I go to fly to uh, Sulawesi, to Kalimantan, Sumatra, and the other, the other islands. And I give to patient antifenom and training to doctor to uh, snake bite treatment. But now I have problem because the flight is very expensive. And I have idea to send by drone or <laughs> send by, by calls, yeah. I have uh, one friend, uh, if you know, uh, many uh, people like drone in Indonesia and I talk uh, the community of drone uh, to helping me with the cold pack I send to the antifenom to the, the other island <laughs> and yeah and one from the people from UK uh, I, I, I don't know you know or not mm, a name Matt Define and Matt Define in the uh, this company collaboration with my son of the last president uh, you know uh, BJ Habibi BJ Habibi is the expert from the airplane in uh, the, the other world uh, I, I think you know Ilham Habibi, the son of Habibi uh, I talk ab uh, about my problem to send my antivenom and now this company send vaccine and blood in the all Indonesia. I think if they uh, want to help me, it's my problem to send antifenom uh, have solution. I hope uh, Elham Habibi and Matt Defan want to uh, helping me to this problem <laughs> because the, yeah, because you know the drone is very uh, cheaper. Uh, different with I go fly or I send by bus <laughs> or I send by the, by the other the other equipment. <laughs> yeah, definitely, it's um, it's definitely an idea that could could work on, especially for a country like yourselves where you've got many, many, many small islands that still have snakes that still have people living on them. So that that could yeah. be could work really really well. I'd just like to apologise to the listeners for my dog just barking because that was uh, very loud. Because she seems to be uh, determined to sit on my knee today. It seems. So, um, some th uh, I lost my train of thought with the dog barking. So, as, as we've spoken, I think we've spoken about quite a lot of different things uh, in in Indonesia with with some of the issues or quite a lot of the issues that you're having. So. For, for you, 
Um, what do you believe is the next step that you need to take in Indonesia to, to really help this, this problem? Is it to get more training to doctors and nurses to allow them to to allow them to be able to treat snake bite better? Okay. Uh, you know the resolution by uh, WSO and 23 May, I, I think in Janae, uh, the WSO and the working and phenomenal and phenomen snake bite, I, I, I am in the uh, advisor review this uh, working uh, the, the name uh, working and phenomation snake bite uh, from the group to WSO. Uh, the resolution have the uh, control and prevent from uh, snake bite. I think the many solution prevent and control from snake bite until production antivenom once uh, help many country neglected key snake bite same Indonesia. Uh, this resolution good to pressure uh, many stakeholders, I think my, my, my government too, to uh, have priority. You know, problem not priority to snake bite case in my country because no priority no program and no solution uh, first aid until treatment until uh, antivenom production or buy antivenom from the other country I hope next time my government collaboration to the WSO to reduction with the guideline prevent and control and uh, give many research to first aid to uh, education and uh, production antivenom and the other because you know uh, if I go to Thailand and talk about production antivenom and KSMI the KSMI not covered all problem Indonesia snake bite because this production not enough to give all Indonesia. Indonesia is very very big, and I know Indonesia must themselves production to antivenom. And I know if the risk of uh, antivenom is not uh, possible, I think first aid is the solution. If the education first aid is good and not wrong to traditional method, I think the face, the past of local past, not go to the systemic past and need many anti okay. I think the first step from my government, one, to have program in uh, Department of Health to reduction snake bite, same it's IV, same tuberculosis, same reprosy, to the snake bite and toxinology problem, the other, uh, hornet, jellyfish and the other. The program uh, need priority and need many people to join many doctor, nurse, and expert, herpetologist, and the other. And many research to uh, solution to this case. And the second step, Indonesia have to priority from money to uh, equipment from the snake bite, equipment from the hornet and the other and education and all indonesia gave get line to toxinology snake bite uh, you know many dangerous animal in indonesia hornet jellyfish stingray uh, octopus and the other 
I think many problems from uh, to get blind to the doctor and the nurse and the doctor and nurse know who treatment the patient and the third uh, step is sociali uh, socialization or education and student from the children until adult and until the faculty in all Indonesia same disaster you know last time many people don't know is the disaster and you know Indonesia is the permit of disaster <laughs> and now uh, my government has policy to education disaster to the uh, student I think in the uh, kindergarten until the faculty uh, student to know if the disaster or disaster uh, you go around you go uh, in the uh, building or the other I, I think it's good to toxinology too and all people in Indonesia now first aid no go to the hospital or the, to go to doctor or the nurse and not to go to the many traditional methods and have problem to fatality and disability. I think three words it's important to next time from my government if reduction the case make but and the other problem from personality I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think I think you've just given us so so much information and keeping an eye on the time we're just short of an hour and so I would just like to say a massive massive thank you for coming on to the show it's been absolutely eye-opening and I think a lot of our a lot of our listeners will will agree and I and I think a lot of the Southeast Asian countries like yourself like Indonesia and are very much forgotten when it comes to snake bite and I'd like to uh, I'd like definitely like to do more episodes with with more people in the areas that uh, in in these areas that are heavily affected and I think our listeners would too so thank you so much for coming on to the show today it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on and I know you were very worried about your English but that was absolutely perfect that was gen genuinely, <laughs> Sorry, genuinely. Many not good English for your, you. <laughs> your English is a lot better than you think. It was very, very good, very, very good. So thank you thank so, you. so thank much you, uh, coming on. Yeah, and uh, and from this, uh, I think uh, I'm focused to one working, but uh, a little working, but. I gave the patient a big love to helping them. <laughs> uh, I'm not a big doctor, but I I think I um, uh, must give love only, big love from all people in Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank thank you very much, and I'd just like to say thank you, Ross. It's yeah. okay, thank you. <laughs> I'd just like to say thank you to all our listeners as well for tuning into this episode of Word on the Snakevine. I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope to hear from you all again soon.